SDR. Land Survey Ship Technician Replica Magpie or Aster are Generation 5 Cosmic Pioneer Specialist replicas designed to assist orbital missions or recon missions. Aster is also the player character and protagonist of the game, being the replica who we control and see the world through. Over the course of this video, I will explain the lore of both the replica type and their main character to offer a complete insight into what we know about them. So with no more delay, let's get into the lore behind the replica who refuses to die. To begin, we really should review the core occurrences of the game, seeing as she is the person we play as a quick review of the plot is good to establish what we see her do within the story. Aster is the protagonist, and as the protagonist, we see the game through her eyes. At the start of the game, she awakens in the Paris to find it has crashed on a frozen planet called Lang. She finds a gate, and upon passing, there is a hole in the ground. In this hole, she finds a strange room, where she picks up the king in yellow. Eventually, we find her again within the top floor of S23, stating she is searching for her lover. Over the course of the story, Aster travels through S23, going deeper into the facility and passing various enemies, before eventually reaching the bottom of the mines. Here she finds nowhere, and after pushing through the strange area, she emerges in a vast field of red eternity. Within eternity, she passes through another gate and finds various previous dead versions of herself before succumbing to injuries. After a dream sequence where she remembers her past with Arion and Paros, she reawakens determined to fulfill her promise. She then descends down a hall to Roadfront. After completing several puzzles in Roadfront, she returns to the strange room, which she learns was Arion's. Walking past the door, she then fights Falke in a final battle. Defeating Falke, she pushes to the gate again, where Adler waits. He stabs her and she shots him. She pushes forward back to the Paros despite a fatal wound and finds her way back to the cryo room before the game ends and she succumbs to the damages. This is a very quick and abbreviated review that only touches the surface, however it is a good way to really remind everyone of Alster's journey. From here, we should cover the general lore of Alster units as a whole. The lore around these units can be learned from several documents thrown throughout the game. Masters, like all of the replicas, have oxidant blood and bioengineered flesh that is inedible for gestalts. Masters have a biomechanical with carbon fiber reinforced polyethylene shell and titanium skeleton frame, which supports an ARLM or repair logic module. This module can be used by Aster units to easily repair themselves and crucial mission equipment. Along with this repair logic, Aster units can make use of coagulant K to thicken oxidant and reduce bleeding as well as the construction foam or polyurethane resin found in repair sprays to heal and repair themselves. Asters are described in greater detail in the Replica Overview page, which states the following. A versatile combat engineer unit primarily designed for orbital service. These stuff and stoic loners are best suited as specialist sappers and scouts. Their technical knowledge and combat capabilities make these units true survivalists, especially when in their iconic white and blue heavy combat configuration, which sports bullet-resistant armor plating on their chest and forearms. Since the original neural pattern for this unit was lost with the destruction of the central neural archive in Vinita, new Aster units have been produced based on the commissioned unit from the Paris program. This document details several key aspects of the Aster unit, these being that their current neural base is based off a decommissioned Aster unit from the Paris program due to the destruction of the central neural archive, and that they have both a standard style as well as a heavier white and blue combat configuration, which is described as being iconic for their type. In their known issues page, we can learn more about the unit. As the units were chosen for the Paris program for their adaptability and reliability under long-term isolation conditions. Stoic and reserved Aster units have a relatively stable neural pattern. It is best for you to leave it alone and interact with the Aster unit as little as possible. Aster's neural pattern was a soldier of Vinitan origin, so their needs are basic. Avoid talking to the Aster unit about the war. Pyro's vessels are fitted with a specialized calibration pod which may help with persona stabilization. 
To avoid resurfacing of Gestalt memories, do not show or give the Aster unit photographs, especially of soldiers during the war. Do not show the Aster unit movies or let it listen to music. Do not try to befriend the Aster unit. This characterizes Asters as being a unit that is supposed to be distant from their Gestalt commanders. Emotionless and cold, whose only purpose is to maintain the vessel. Standard Asters have an orange chest piece, but Asters also have a heavy combat configuration where they are armored with bullet resistant blue and white plating over their chest and forearms. We see this demonstrated when Aster loads a past version of herself, which grants her this look. From general Aster units, we can turn to our specific Aster's past. Using documents and flashbacks, we can put together a timeline of Aster's life prior to the events of the game. To begin, we can cover the mind of their origins. Aster's Gestalt was a Vinetan soldier whose neural pattern was uploaded to the planet's central neural archive. The Yusun nation used her neural pattern to create the Aster replica unit. Her original neural pattern was lost after the central neural archive was destroyed, but the nation would use the neural pattern of a dead Aster unit to continue producing them. Aster's Gestalt's name is debated, however, it is known that she fought in the war of Unit 12. Photographs of Unit 12 were sent to soldiers' families in Roadfront. Esther can find some of these photos in the Young Photo Store. During the false ending, Esther experiences the memories of the Gestalt in a series of brief flashbacks. She is seen with a serious injury to her right eye. She survived the war and is later seen standing next to Alina Seo with a bandage covering her eye. There are two leading theories for who is Esther's Gestalt those being Anna Huang and Lilith Ito. Proof for Anna Huang. Huang's name also appears on the safe containing butterflies, which has a password of LSDR. To many, this affirms her as the Gestalt of Esther. However, on the photo, it is shown that the Gestalt of Esther was lower ranked than Alina. And if the theory that the top of the list is the CEO is to be believed, then the woman in the photo likely is not the CEO and thus is not Huang. Proof for Lilith Ito. The photo is found in the Yeong family store and is believed to have been found by Ariane originally from the Itos. This would connect the Ito family to the photo and provide evidence that the girl in the photo is an Ito. The meaning of her name is more symbolic to Aster's journey, being as Lilith was one who defied God. Aster too defies a god most directly being Falke. Regardless who was the Gestalt, this person's mind would be used as a base plate for the creation of our Alster. In the early life of Alster, we don't really know a lot. Prior to serving on the Penrose, it is unlikely that Alster did very much. If she did, there is a chance she served on Vinata for a short time. This is evident by her comment regarding the planet and the orrery. This comment, however, could be a sign from her Gestalt memories regarding the planet. The ocean world ravaged by war. I can hear the sound of the sea. Eventually, however, Aster would board the Paros along with Aryan Yang. This would be the place where she spends the rest of her life. The Paros has three main stages that can be used to characterize their journey on it. Phase 1 is the beginning of the trip. There is no clear document detailing the objectives during this time, as the ship is still pushing forward to the edge of the solar system. During this phase, Aster and Ariane would begin to fall in love with each other, as is evident by the Cycle 1000 note. I've tried to teach Aster how to dance. It's so cute how clumsy she can be when it comes to these things. It's clear from this that Ariane didn't care about the regulations and began to teach Aster all sorts of human-like activities to grow closer to the replica. Phase 2 begins at 1500 cycles, or 1500 days, or around 4 years. This is the secondary stage of the Paris program, and is the stage where the second half of the program is spent in. We can read about it in a phase 2 briefing. By your calculations, 1500 cycles of mission time will have passed when you receive this message. Congratulations, comrade! By now, you should have become fully acclimatized to your new life and board your ship. As you approach the Oort Cloud, your search for new worlds will begin. Utilizing the long-range sensors, you will scout for valuable resources, habitable worlds, or signs of alien life. Remember to rely on your replica to assist you in maintaining your vessel. We all wish you great success in your mission. It is during this phase that Aster and Ariane were deeply in love, demonstrated by the Cycle 1024 note. Before I met Aster, I never believed I would find someone I could fall in love with like that. 
Phase 3, the end. Phase 3 begins at 3000 cycles or 3000 days or 8.21 years. This is the final stage of the Paros program and is the stage where the decay of the Paros, Replica and Gestalt begin to occur. We can read about the mission particulars from the Phase 3 briefing. Congratulations, comrade! You've survived 3000 cycles, reaching the final phase of the Paros program. With the end of the operational lifetime of your replica unit approaching, it is time to prepare for the final phase of your mission. If you have not found a suitable word for landing at this point, accept that you will not. Find solace in the thought that others might be successful where you failed. As you are probably aware, your ship's spare parts and rations will soon be depleted. Life support systems and reactor shielding will soon to leak from the cooling system, begin to fail and radiation may begin. We recommend you do not attempt to prolong your suffering by reusing old filters or begin rationing supplies. Instead, make peace with your fate. We suggest that you ask your replica while it is still operational to spare you from a slow and agonizing death or that you take permanent rest in the cryogenic pod. Remember, you will die having served your nation by partaking in a glorious demonstration of our power. This is the stage we see the beginning of the party held by Aryan and Aster in the memory sequence. In this stage, the reactor begins to decay, which causes a radiation leak. This causes a rapid decay of the state of Aster and Aryan. It is suggested in the state that the Gestalt is to be put into cryo permanently to allow for painless death or killed by the replica. However, it seems as though something went wrong seeing as Aryan suffered from cancer before her death. In the end, Aster ultimately dies before she is able to help Aryan pass on. We can learn this from examining the corpse of the Paros Aster in End, which will say the following. I couldn't keep my promise. Despite my best efforts, I eventually fell ill too. It had to end this way. This is where Aster's story ends, some time after the game would begin. The exact nature of Aster in this game is confusing, seeing as she died long before the game started. And this is something that theories differ on. This video is more focused on the lore of the replica, so I won't go into specific interps or ending explanations. What is important is that throughout the course of the game, Aster pushes to reunite with her lost lover from the Pyro's days. To close the video, I'd like to add a minor theory regarding this character to really finish up this bouquet of sadness that she constitutes, specifically with the question regarding why did Aster die before Ariane. Asters are expected to stop functioning soon after the start of phase 3 or the 8.21 year point. In replicas, an oxidant is used in place of blood. When one considers the science behind oxidants, they will find that these are highly reactive molecules and biological systems can worsen the effects of cancer. Combining this knowledge with the fact that the reactor is estimated to begin failing in the third phase, a fact that is supported by Arian's presumed development of cancer from the radiation, we can determine that the same cancer that was slowly killing Arian would likely kill Aster quicker. Thus, why the note mentions that Aster units approach operational end during this time as they succumb to the radiation far faster than a human. This left Arian in a situation where she was unable to be put to rest by Aster, as Aster died before she could. Finally, a cute bit of trivia. Did you know in the files Aster is referred to as Ellie? I just thought it was cute and figured I should bring it up. So with that, we can conclude this video. The lore of Aster is relatively simple in isolation, and rather its interactions with the surrounding confusion is what can make it difficult to understand. She is a great character and it was rather fun to dig into her lore to finalize the last replica lore video. If you have any questions or notice anything missed, feel free to drop a comment below. We will try to read them all. If you'd like to join a Discord that talks about this game or just to relax, Chris's home Discord is linked below. Finally, if you'd like to watch a review on other replica lore, then there is a whole series on this channel where Chris has now gone through every one, so feel free to enjoy. But that's all I've got for y'all today, so this has been Christopher Beast aka Sophia, this video's narrator, and I'll see y'all next time.